True crime stories have a huge fan base these days, from television to books to podcasts, and it seems that women make up most of that audience. In fact, a 2010 study found that close to 70% of the Amazon reviews of true crime books are written by women. Carolyn Osario and Kim Shepard have a theory about that, and they've just deb debuted their own true crime podcast called Scene of the Crime. That sounds very ominous. Yes, so it is very ominous. So tell me about uh, women in true crime. I think that we've we've talked a lot about it, obviously, because we're doing the podcast, and, and we've talked to a lot of women about why they love true crime. When we tell people about this podcast, women's eyes, like, turn into saucers. And I think that from all the women that we've talked to, at least in my experience, is that it's kind of escapism, which sounds kind of strange, but... Um, I think it has all those metrics like you can relate to the victim and the family and that investigator that just never gives mm -hmm. up and then the DNA, the technology that's advanced and so we're catching these cold case killers. So I think it's just a whole, you know, when you're doing dishes or you're doing, um, you know, mundane things, it's kind of escapism, which isn't to say that, you know, we can't honor the victims, which we do in our podcast because right. that's really important to us. Yeah to also, you know, Absolutely, honor the victims. People. Uh, my theory was that women are so often the victims of mm -hmm. these crimes, especially, That's part of especially it as well. serial crimes. So you've thought about it, you've been, you know, concerned about it, and then you want to see how the case plays out. That was my theory. Well, the New York Times had a really great piece in it where a woman who wrote, who was really into true crime and is kind of, you know, coming out of the closet about it, like, I love true crime, I'm sorry. Um, but she said that a lot of women are victims of true crime, and so it gives, I mean, victims of not true crime, but victims of crime and, you know, murder, and it gives them kind of a roadmap, like, hey, it, you know, be safe. You know, yeah. don't take don't How take does chances. This you know, what is going <clears throat> on? My own yeah. like personal theory too is that there's a little bit of this almost like rebellion um, in the idea that talking about this is sort of taboo for women. Yeah. Like if you have a yeah, man that's, that's talking about crime or the techniques that police used or you know the detective work, it's not that surprising. But when women start talking about it, it's a little bit like oh. Really? You want to talk about that? Yeah. So it's a little Isn't bit that taboo. too dark for you? Yeah. Yes. And I think that it's kind of fun to be like, ooh, you know, there's other women that are thinking about this stuff too and want to talk about it. There's also a fascination, I think, with um, some of these crimes where we're not sure what happened. Right. I think that, you know, the making of a murderer, you know, those kinds of things really kind of stir up your thought about the criminal justice system, the investigative process, all of those things that, yes. that go on. So your podcast, mm -hmm. you talk about specific cases, real cases, mm -hmm. right? Yes. We um, just released our, our podcast yesterday, and some of the, the first three episodes are the Fairy Cabin. The Curse of the Fairy Cabin. The Curse of the Fairy Cabin. North Bend area. All of the first three episodes are in the Snoqualmie Valley. And then our fourth episode, which we released today <laughs> in honor of New Day Northwest. Yeah. Um, Be careful up there in Snoqualmie <laughs> Valley. Is in Whatcom County. <laughs> so let, okay, let's talk with, uh, first of all, about the, the Christmas Carnage yes. case. Yes, yes. That's, so the, this, the format of the podcast is each episode we, we take a story, mm -hmm. and then we talk about it. So Christmas Carnage is one that I did and I interviewed former King County Sheriff John Urquhart who was the public yes. information officer at the time and it talks about, there you go, the family. Just um, remind us about mm. the case. Yeah, so basically the daughter uh, Michelle Anderson killed on Christmas Eve. Her and her boyfriend um, killed, murdered six members of their Good family. God. They're the Ju um, Wayne and Judy Anderson and her brother Scott and his wife Erica and their two children, five and three year old. And I mean, and it's so horrible that you immediately wonder how could this happen? And, and that's part of the story you explore. Yeah, and in this case, we don't find an answer to that. Like I was thinking when I would t when I was interviewing Urquhart that that I would find that answer why? Why? Why would someone do this? And in this particular case, you never get to it. But what you do is you talk about the victims and what they went through. And we talked a lot about like how graphic because we are both moms having 3 and a 5-year-old mm -hmm. and what you would do in that situation and it's just there's nothing. It was an ambush. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason. So, and then the surviving sister, yes. who we hear from in the podcast, yes. who was supposed to she be was there supposed to and be could there. have been, her and her kids could have been additional victims. Yeah. It's just crazy. Yeah. Doomsday bunker. Tell me about this. Oh so my that's gosh. one I did. Uh, that is from North Bend. People might remember yes. Peter Keller was found in this bunker out by Rattlesnake Ridge. Um, just he'd been building this thing for eight years. It was a three-story bunker. 
Um, but they didn't know that when they came across the bodies of Kayleen and Lynette, his wife and daughter. In their home, there was a house fire. They found the bodies inside. And then it took them several days to figure out that, that Peter was the one who right. did it. And then, you know, some more time to find that bunker. And the whole idea, again, of why did this happen, mm -hmm. we sort of get an answer in that which you know it's you can hear on the satisfying it is not satisfying exactly i mean not like it should be satisfying but it's it's well, like you try this, to you struggle to yes, understand right yes. your your yeah. mind immediately starts to sort through the details mm -hmm. looking for an yeah. answer that's a very human thing and you start and to sometimes wonder it's never one you can understand well that's the thing it's like even if you get the answer of why it's not satisfying because well, there is no good reason no, to commit no. these kinds of crimes. And this guy planned this for eight years. And when you talk about nobody knew, nobody Lord. knew what was going on inside of his head. And they're really scaring me to death. The funny <laughs> thing is, because this all happened locally and we're in the community too, um, you know, now we're hearing from people who knew the families and who were like, I knew Peter, I went to work with him, and I, I met his daughter several times, he was so great, and you know, even people who knew them, just shocked. We have just a few seconds, so I'll tell you that there are episodes about the Hillside Strangler, the Washington Connection, and the Curse of the Fairy Cabin, and if that doesn't make you want to listen to the podcast, <laughs> I don't know yeah. what will. But just very quickly, how'd you get into this? What's your own kind well, of it's her reason fault. for doing uh, well, it? Well, we both <laughs> worked in news radio together, and I had listened to the podcast Cold, which is an amazing podcast, I highly recommend it. Um, and I just realized how powerful podcasts with, with true is. crime can be once you get, the, it's so intimate in, with those earbuds in your ear and you just and feel you're like you're using your there. imagination. Yes, yes. And so I reached, I, I just wanted to do it with another woman. I wanted to have another woman co-host it with me. And Kim was just, you know, so smart, um, so relatable, so genuine. And um, I, I just, I went to her and I, it was kind of like scary when I texted her, but she immediately called me. Well, yeah. this is what you were supposed to do. I have this feeling you two are going to crack a case down the road. Well, <laughs> as a matter of fact, yeah, you we did it. have someone already reach out to us who has a case that is unsolved that she would like us to pursue. And so that may be happening in season two. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and if people have tips, please go to our website and, and if there's cases that you want us to cover, please let us know because we'd love to do amazing. that. amazing. You guys are really terrific. Thank yeah, you. Thank I can't you. wait to thank listen. You. Scene of the Crime podcast is available now. You can listen to episode one, The Curse of the Fairy Cabin. I've got to hear this by <laughs> going to sceneofthecrimepodcast.com and we'll put that on our website as well.